The movie Godzilla Minus One was truly emotionally intense, riveting, heart-wrenching, every word that you can think of to describe quality entertainment. I honestly have to say it's one of the most captivating films I've seen in a while. No. Ah! Love Godzilla's design, love the characters, love the human characters, which is very rare for me in movies like this. But believe it or not, the scariest part of this movie for me, the most haunting part, was the ending. Spoilers for those who haven't seen the movie yet. <clears throat> also, what are you doing here? Go watch the movie. So for those of you who did watch the movie or those of you who don't give a care, not a go, a scene at the end of the movie it makes me believe that the movie was actually supposed to be sad and she was supposed to stay dead, but maybe the test screening was like, no man, that guy went through a lot of pain and anguish. Like the least you could do is give him a happy ending. That's what she said. <laughs> but at the end of the movie, thank goodness, Noriko is alive. But it's a bittersweet feeling because as she is hugging her family in this very sweet and moving scene, we can see something creeping up her neck. Oh, shit! Remember, she was hit with Godzilla's radiation. And not only does it set up for a sequel, but everyone's left wondering what the hell is going on with her neck. There's some people saying it's radiation poisoning, or she could be mutating. And we have to also remember that Godzilla himself succumbed to the mutation due to radiation as well. He transfigured into this behemoth, malevolent creature. And it's possible that he was initially a dinosaur, just some regular theropod, but as a result of the radiation, he has now become Bowser. I think this movie was meant to be a one-off, but they left it with an open ending that's open to interpretation, but also can potentially set up a sequel. And just as we got with the ending of Shin Godzilla, it almost seems to suggest that something more horrific could be right around the corner. Shin Godzilla was always mutating, and at the very end, you saw what would have become the most scary, terrifying thing to ever walk the earth in humanity. Just Imagine if he had been left alive long enough. Shin Godzilla always evolves based on what he faced. He adapts to his hostile surroundings. So if he is beaten by something or he realizes that his body is succumbing to a lot of injury or there's a threat, he usually evolves to help himself handle that threat. And these humanoids were basically his way of handling that threat. He realized that the threat were these little humans. And so, recognizing that he was at a disadvantage as a really large creature, he was going to send these things in, maybe unknowingly, because it's just biology, to hunt down every human. And I actually made a POV story of this. It's a very old story when I was putting stories on this channel. You guys can go and check it out if that's your kind of thing. But from my mind, that is basically a continuation of what I think would have happened had the movie not ended. And boy oh boy, for me personally, it's terrifying. So, the fact that Godzilla keeps evolving and Shin Godzilla can evolve to the point where he can branch off or bud separate organisms from himself, I don't think it's too far to imagine the same possibility with Noriko. This Godzilla also evolves based on his experiences. And the evolution of these creatures with Shin Godzilla and Godzilla don't seem to be just tied on their original host body. The radiation can affect them in many different ways. It can make them transform into a super evolved creature or if required, branch off into many other creatures to help deal with the threat that he now knows are humans. It's also possible that Nodigo won't turn into a mutated monster, but it could just be a kind of sickness that starts to eliminate humanity. So not only do they have to worry now about these kaiju, but they now have to worry about the radiation sickness that is caused as a result of being in contact with these kaiju or in the area that they affect. The kaiju themselves are no longer just the imminent danger, but as a result of them being in close proximity to human beings, they now pose an even worse biological threat. First we get devastation and destruction, just like the consequences of the atom bomb, and then we get the aftermath, which is the radiation sickness. And this makes sense when you also consider that Godzilla himself is an allegory for what happened with the bombing in Japan. So it only makes sense that they would follow it up with this radiation sickness or what would be this world's version of it. I think it's a very interesting way to tell the story. Also, when you consider that they're also alluding to the fact that Godzilla is still alive and can put himself back together and regenerate from many little pieces like the freaking liquid terminators, it's reasonable to expect that the sequel to Godzilla Minus One, or whatever they decide to name it, will likely depict Godzilla as an even greater menace beyond his current location. But my guess is they're probably going to focus more on the effect that he has around him. They made him super scary in this movie, so I can totally see them making him an even bigger issue later on. He's basically the unkillable or hard to destroy reptile from SCP, but what if he is a step further? As a result of the radiation sickness he causes or whatever is going on with Noriko's neck, causes the people affected by it to also transform into these tiny humanoid kaiju that we would have seen 
had Shin Godzilla continued? What if these tiny humanoid kaiju, like they did in my fanfiction story, start hunting down all of humanity and they're just as hard to kill or impossible to kill as Shin Godzilla or Godzilla Minus One? Can you imagine the mayhem and the hopelessness? I mean, it's already pretty unnerving that Godzilla is on the smaller side in Godzilla Minus One, which makes the threat feel more personal. Now picture dealing with these creatures that are still pretty big, able to now track you inside of a building or smaller spaces that you thought you were safe inside. That's terrifying. And not to mention, devouring you while you're alive. See that? That right there? That's a whole new level of terrifying. That's a nightmare within a nightmare that's already going on. Of course, they can probably go the more traditional route, end up with something like the Human Rose Hybrid Kaiju Biolante, or something like the monster from that movie, The Relic, which is an amazing movie, where our sweet Noriko becomes the angel in her family, again, now married to Koichi, only to become a bloodless demon that starts to mutate into this disgusting creature. Not gonna lie, that would be so depressing and salt to the wound. I'm guessing the little girl is gonna be older if they decide to continue with these characters, which they probably will, but there's just so many directions they could take with this. It's like the Japanese score a win, only to get hit with a fresh wave of uncertainty and defeat in a totally different area, which is completely a result of the first problem. That to me sounds like a solid story. And then of course, we don't know what's up with the thing on her neck, but we do know that it's directly linked to Godzilla. I mean, it could be a connection. The fact that it's growing actively at the end of the movie, we see it actually creeping up her neck might mean that Godzilla is still alive and the longer he stays alive or as long as he is alive the more it'll keep growing until she's fully mutated or worse and then now it's a race against time to save her either by taking down Godzilla or figuring out how to kill him permanently. My question is, will they need to scatter all his pieces all over the world or is it gonna be like a starfish situation where each piece regenerates into its own horrifying thing. Oh my God, that'd be horrible. Like, imagine this for a second. Imagine this nightmarish scenario. Godzilla breaks into a bunch of pieces and you separate them thinking that by doing that, he'll be dead for good, right? Only for each new piece, to regenerate into a fully formed creature, probably even deadlier than the one it originally came from. Like a freaking starfish. Terrifying. Now that's some horror movie crap. Considering the limited budget and the impressive results that they achieved, CGI and filmmaking technology. If the Japanese can pull off something like this, I am confident, more than confident, that they can raise the bar even higher in a sequel to Godzilla Minus One. I don't have to tell you guys twice that that's something I am definitely going to be throwing my money at. Thanks so much for watching. This is Ulturi. You ask, we answer.